in the second video for chapter 20, I want to um, actually begin reviewing the material, reviewing the redox reactions. And, and what I want to concentrate on is the relationship between this, these terms here. Um, I pulled this from the first, uh, or the chapter number four. Uh, it would be probably useful to review that. I, I'm, I, I go through that a little bit more slowly and more detail, I think. Uh, here, I just want to use this chemical reaction that we see for the calcium being oxidized by oxygen from the air to form calcium oxide to, to, to break down everything, to, to look at the, um, um, the half reactions and uh, actually and extend that to uh, the, uh, the oxidizing agent, reducing agent. This is really, I guess, in some ways a continuation from um, the, the, the first uh, material for Chapter 20, whether um, you saw it in the classroom or with a, a video. Um, so the, the overall reaction that we see here is shown up top here. It's spontaneous. You know, it, occur, it occurs naturally. Um, <clears throat> let me just balance uh, uh, these things here. That would be a solid, that would be a gas, and that's a solid. And um, I just want to go ahead and break down the, uh, the two half reactions here. You know, what's happening? Well, we have calcium metal going to calcium oxide. Calcium oxide is made up of these two uh, ions. And so one thing from the start, you need to be able to recognize how you break apart a salt. So uh, you want to look back at, at chapter four material for that or ask me in class. Um, this is the, the LEO, the loss of electrons. Um, this would be referred to as an oxidizing half reaction. What I'm trying to do here is, is give you a recorded session where I, I sort of I keep track of all the terms and break it down on a, on a very simple reaction such as the oxidation of the, uh, the uh, calcium. Remember that whenever you have a Leo, you always have a, a GER, you always have a re reducing half reaction. You know, without that pairing up, no chemistry occurs, okay? Um, and so here, well, the, the species is gaining the electrons here is the, the oxygen atom. Notice how I'm going to, how I'm doing this, just like with the first material for this uh, chapter. I know that I go to uh, the oxide ion because I can see that in the, the product here. Well, the first thing you want to do is, is balance the atoms, and so I need two there. And then if I look at the charges here, it's, uh, you know, overall it's neutral on this side, and there's a, a, a negative a four total on this side. And so what it does, it tells me how many electrons I need to add to, uh, to balance out the charge, really. So in all of these examples, you balance the number of atoms first, and then you ba balance the, the charge using electrons. And as we can see, you know, what's going to happen is that the electrons are lost here, and they uh, drive the reduction reaction here. That's a good point to note. They Think about it this way. They drive the reduction reaction. So we would refer to this, and I'm actually going to... Let me change the red here. We would really say that this is a reducing agent. And this is the oxidizing agent. Oops, agent. So remember, you know, the species that's being reduced is the oxidizing agent. The species that's being oxidized is the reducing agent. And if you remember that kind of the, the thought process about the reducing agent drives the oxidation reaction, I'm sorry, the reducing reaction down here, okay? And the way it does that is it loses the electrons, it gets kicked off, and then these uh, force the oxygen to be reduced is, is one way to, to think about it. You know, a, a, another perspective of this is the introduction of oxidation numbers, and this is just a review. Uh, you know, for the purpose of explaining the oxidation numbers on this example, we need to know that guy, and we need to know that guy. And so this is as simple, simple as you can get. If elemental form, it's zero. 
if it's a monoatomic ion, it's just a charge. And so if we apply that here, we say that's plus or zero, that's a plus two, this is zero, and this is a, a minus two. And the minus two, I'm not factoring in the molar coefficient. I don't need to. I'm just looking at oxidation number four, single uh, oxygen atom in oxide is what it is. And remember, the oxidation numbers, really what we're trying to do is, is, is keep track of the electron flow. I'll put it that way. Keep during a, a redox reaction. Um, what I mean by that, well, essentially the uh, the species that, that, that gets increased in the oxidation number, notice it's being oxidized, and the one that gets decreased is being reduced. Um, Actually, that, that's a decent connection. You know, there, there's so many terms in this particular um, aspect of, of aqueous chemistry that uh, y you gotta you gotta look for some kind of connection. A mnemonic like Leo the Lion goes Gur, or this notion that you know zero to a negative two. That's a, that's a you're reducing the number there. It's a reducing reaction. This oxygen gets reduced, <laughs> and then you know, that reduction process would, would drive the oxidation process, if you will, up here in, in some context. Okay, so, so that's, that's another perspective, oxidation numbers. And then, and then finally, I want to introduce another uh, set of terms here. I'll just go to black here. Um, and, and this is going to come to, uh, into play when we start putting numbers to these processes. And, and I'm going to use the term a stronger... Uh, reduction potential. Remember this, that phrase there. It's going to come back to us when we start looking at this, uh, uh, a table of some numerical values for these half reactions. Well, what does that mean? It means if I say it has a stronger reduction potential, well, it's a stronger, uh, it has a stronger potential to be reduced has a stronger potential to act as an oxidizing agent versus this one up here that's actually being oxidized. We would say that this would have a stronger um, oxidation potential. You know, when we start talking about these individual half reactions, chemists could have chosen either one of these phrases to express that idea of, of, of which one is more powerful than the other. You know, this one has a stronger reduction potential, this one has a, a stronger oxidation potential. Well, as it turns out, and I don't know why, I wasn't on the committee for this decision, but uh, there's probably some historical perspective of it, but the, what, what chemists have chosen is to use this term. To, whenever we talk about a half reaction, we talk about it in the context of how strong is, it, is a reduction potential. You know, how strong is that reaction? What's the likelihood of it undergoing a reduction reaction? If it's really strong, if it's, if it's a powerful oxidizing agent, we say it has a strong reduction potential. Well, what about these half reactions that are oxidized, these half reactions that have a strong oxidation potential? Well, actually, the, the phrase that, that we would use, we would, we would sort of turn this on its head. You know, something with a strong oxidation potential like we see here, you know, it's driving the reaction forward with the loss of the electrons here. Well, if it's a strong oxidation potential, then it's going to have a weak reducing or reduction potential. So when we look at that tabulated data, the, the, the weak reduction potential, that that is oxidized, well, we would, we would have the, I'm going to give it this um, label because this is what you're going to see. This is going to be, um, uh, we'll say small. And then on down here, the one that actually acts as uh, the, the oxidizing agent, we would say that it's going to have a reduction potential that is, is, that is large. We can use these, the tabulated data. Let me uh, just fast forward. This is quite a few slides into it. But it looks something like this. There's a series of, all of these are reduction half reactions. And then we have a numerical value describing how strong of a, uh, 
uh, reduction potential are we looking at here? So what it means is that these up here with a large positive value, well, they're large reduction potentials. They're in the camp of the oxygen here. They're going to have a, they're going to be more likely to occur as a reducing reaction. And so, again, I want to introduce it here on an example that we've seen before. And I think the best I can tell, I have included every aspect of the terms that, well, that we need to deal with right now <laughs> um, for, for this particular topic, this redox reaction. So, so, so this is my, my best attempt at, at getting all these terms across to you in, in one particular spot. So I would strongly urge that if, listen to this again if you need to, look it in the book, but you need to get these terms down, and if you if you do that now, your uh, frustration level is going to be much lower when we start looking at uh, a, a specific uh, chemical reaction, such as the next one, such as this particular reaction. This is a this is a spontaneous redox reaction, and what we see here. Um, Actually, I'm gonna, I need to change the pen color. Okay, what we see here, I'm going to go ahead and label up here. This is zinc. The blue solution is uh, copper uh, plus. They, they're in contact with one another. This is, this is the, uh, the uh, initial state, I, and this would be the, the final state. And this is a spontaneous reaction. You throw a piece of uh, zinc metal into a copper solution, and I guess one thing to notice, the first thing I see anyway, is that that blue coloration actually uh, decreases just a little bit. It's telling me that the, the copper plus two is decreasing and then this this black substance on the metal here that is that is copper metal being precipitated being precip I guess, yeah being formed on the, uh, the the piece of zinc and at the same time I mean we don't see it here but but this this zinc uh, metal is uh, is being uh, eroded away. Uh, I'll just put the whole thing on. Being eroded away. It's being lost during the process. There is a, there it is uh, right here actually. If we put a reaction arrow, these are the reactants, and then these are the products here for this spontaneous reaction. And again, it just happens automatically when these two come together. We've seen, we've talked about spontaneity many times up to this point, and now this, uh, we're just applying it to a, a specific type of reaction, a redox reaction. Some redox reactions are spontaneous, others are not. We're going to learn how to calculate that. So we're actually going to see Gibbs free energy, uh, equilibrium constant, uh, showing back up in, in this chapter as well. Now, of course, before we get to those calculations, let's just look at the chemistry. Let, let's appreciate what's happening here. And uh, I'm going to break this down, half reactions, all that. Um, take your cues from the actual overall reaction that's listed here. Um, zinc is going to the plus two. It's going to be losing electrons. It's going to be uh, what's being oxidized. And, and let me just uh, do those half reactions here. I know zinc goes to plus two. Uh, the atoms are balanced. Now I need to use electrons to balance the charge. Those electrons would have to go over here to cancel out the negative two to make this new make this side neutral, which is consistent with the zinc being neutral. Copper. You can look at the chemistry there, on the previous slide. It goes from copper plus two to copper metal. Atoms are balanced, and now we need a uh, uh, plus two electrons here so that the charges on this side. Uh, are balanced with the the char the lack of charge on the the copper side. This is the Leo. This is the oxidizing half reactions, and oops, this is the 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 Ger there, the reducing half reactions, half reaction. So, uh, let me just go through the the full uh, treatment of this thing. So, if uh, this this oxidizing reagent drives the reduction reaction, so this is the reducing agent. And then there's, you know, there's always a yin and a yang, right? Then this would be the, the, the oxidizing uh, agent. Th these things always come in pair. Again, you know, you can't have a Leo without a Ger, uh, or you, you have no reaction. 
uh, in this particular case, things are already balanced with the two electrons being lost here and two electrons are being gained here. And so that's, that's consistent. If you added these two half reactions up, uh, they are consistent with the previous slide, which the overall reaction that's, that's listed down here. Um, uh, you may want to take a few minutes just to look at the chemistry here that they're trying to describe with the, uh, the picture. But anyway, I'm, I'm more focused on, on what I'm doing here. Um, I want to do the same thing as I did before. Uh, I want to look at the oxidation um, numbers. This is zero. This is a plus two. It's increasing. That's consistent with the oxidizing half reactions. And, uh, and then here, uh, this is the one that I always try to focus on. It goes from a plus two to zero. It's reduced in number. It's the reducing half reaction. Uh, if, if you're looking for some kind of uh, you know, mnemonic reference, I would suggest starting with that. Reducing oxidation number indicates a reduction reaction, okay? Now for this particular example, I actually want to, to link these two half reactions with that table that we looked at just a few minutes ago. Now I said that this was the reducing half reaction, so, so what we would expect, remember that reduction potential? There's a reduction, and this is actually the standard reduction potential. I apologize for abbreviations, but yeah, I'm, I want to save some time. So the standard reduction potential here for the reducing half reaction should be, it, it should be larger than this guy. This should have the standard reduction potential that is, that is lower, is smaller in value. And, and we can actually see that on the chart. Let's take a look at, at this chart. And, okay, there's our, actually, let's look at the, the chemical reactions here. Okay, there's our copper, and uh, this was the, the GER from the last example. This was the, the LEO for the last re example. But notice, and, and notice it, the, so that, when you look at this this standard reduction potential table, this is from the chapter within chapter 20. There's a larger list in appendix uh, E, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, appendix E. You'll find the larger list. Uh, just a little comment here, just a heads up. Uh, the one in the table is listed, you know, based on the value of the standard reduction potential. Uh, the one in the back of the book is listed by alphabetical order for the uh, actual uh, oxidizing agent. It's what we have here. I'll, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. And so, but there's our positions on the, 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 the table. And then, again, uh, we, okay, let me back up. I want to point something out to you. Remember what I said. This is the, the copper and oxygen reaction. Remember what I said, you know, you can talk about these half reactions, the stronger oxidation potential, stronger reduction potential. And what chemists have chose to do, chosen to do is to do everything from the perspective of a, the reduction potential. So that's fine for the, the GER side of the reaction, the reducing half reaction, but for the oxidizing half reactions, what we have to recognize is that the oxidizing half reaction is going to have a weak reduction potential compared to what it's paired up with, which is important. And, and we see that in this example here. Again, the, the zinc is the one that's oxidized. You would flip this reaction as what chemically it would look like. But that statement that I made earlier is consistent. You know, we can see clearly that the reduction potential for the copper, this is larger than what we see for the reduction potential for zinc. This negative value, or this lower value than this, is telling us that zinc, when paired up with copper, is not going to act as a reduction in a reduction capacity, or a reducing capacity, it's actually going to work in an oxidizing capacity. And that is consistent with what we see in this reaction here. We do see that, that zinc is being oxidized, uh, you know, it's being this this electrode is being lo uh, dissolved during this reaction, eroded away, and then we can see it uh, broken down in the half reaction here. It has that lower reduction potential, and so, you know, what we can actually do? What's the advantage of of this having the table? Well, I guess I, I could 
top of my head, I can think of two advantages. One thing is that we're going to see how we can actually calculate uh, the voltage. We were talking about electrochemistry, and we'll get to that here in a minute, but um, we can actually use these values to, to calculate the kind of battery that would be uh, formed if you chose to use copper and zinc, like the last example. And, and also, just it, by, by, by choosing to use just a reduction half reaction, we actually simplify the process just a little bit, believe it or not, because then we only have one table of reduction reactions. And what we do is when we look at this table, well, essentially what we say is that if, if we want to, to drive this reaction of the reduction of copper, then what we need to do is, is pair it up with any of these substances that's below it or any of these half reactions below it. And, and the oxidation of this guy is going to drive the reduction of that guy. And so this relationship can be used at any point along the graph. For example, if I want to uh, you know, cause the uh, reduction of, of chlorine gas, I would not choose that. I would not choose that. These are higher on the table. But any of these guys, the, if you flip these equations, talk about the, the oxidation reaction, the oxidation of any of these um, um, chemicals on this side of the chart will drive the, the reduction of the, the chlorine gas uh, here. And so we can use this information to, to predict chemical reactions and actually use the information to, if, if we wanted to, construct a particular uh, voltaic cell or galvanic cell, i.e. a battery. So let's go back to our, our reaction here. Like I said, this is a spontaneous reaction. Electrons are being transferred between the zinc and the copper. Well, if we want to, we can, we can, we can set up uh, a, 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 an experiment where we can capture those electrons and do work with those electrons. And, and this, is, this is referred to as a, 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 voltaic, a voltaic or a galvanic cell. And our book, yeah, our book uses voltaic. I'll go through the terms here in a minute. There's more terms coming up, you know. It's not just reduction, oxidation, anode, cathode shows up, salt bridge, there's more to it. So, you know, that's one reason why I said back here with the calcium and the ox oxygen, listen to that again, <laughs> because now I'm going to start using those terms as if you know it, or know it pretty well anyway. And, and you can get lost in the discussion if you're not careful. So, because uh, I'm going to add even more terms to this, this concept. Okay, the voltaic cell. And I'll, I'll go through the design of this in just a minute, but essentially what you're doing is, well, let's see, this is, we can see this is a zinc, and that's uh, the copper metal. And, and, and I'll just go ahead and tell you, you know, the reaction that we see here is the same reaction chemically that we see here. So what's happening? Remember, you know, the, the zinc is, is being oxidized to, to zinc plus. Half reaction looks like that. These electrons are what is, are being captured during this reaction. The electrons are coming from the zinc. Let's look at this. That means that the electrons are originating from the zinc metal. It's actually flowing this direction through the black wire, through the voltmeter. It's reading as a voltage of 1.1 volts. We'll learn how to calculate that here in a few minutes. And then it's flowing over to the other half reaction and causing the, well, the, you know, if electrons are coming in here, this is gaining electrons. It's going to drive the, the GUR on this side. Leo on that side, GUR on that side. And so what we're doing is we're, we're tricking the chemicals. We're, we're forcing the electrons through a different path. During that path, we, we, we make the electrons do work, whether that's in the form of, of, uh, of running an, an iPod or... Uh, uh, power, you know, keeping the power on on a fire extinguisher, not a, a fire alarm, a, a fire alarm, not an extinguisher. Um, we, 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 we trick these electrons into doing work for us. And now the only work that it's doing here is actually, you know, 
driving the, the gauge here to, to the 1.1 volts. That's, that's it, really. Uh, all the elect I, I guess there's some loss during the inefficiency of the passage of the wire and all that, but it's essentially just going over to, to cause uh, the reduction re reaction on this side. Okay, so let's put all this together in a little bit neater picture, see what these solutions are, and the, uh, this one will do that. So this is a breakdown of that galvanic cell, that reaction that we looked at just a minute ago. There's our, our voltmeter shown here. You know, in this picture, we, uh, we not only have to worry about the chemistry, but there, like I said, there's some more terms going on. We have a more complicated system. You know, we don't just have a chemical reaction occurring. We have a chemical reaction that is then being used to, to do some kind of work. So it's a little more complicated. But, but please, just remember, the chemistry that's being described here is exactly as a regular spontaneous reaction. Okay? So, so what do we have here? We've already talked about the zinc, and we can see it. Uh, let me break it down a little bit. There, let me highlight one of these. The zinc, loss of electrons from the zinc. That means that the electrons are being pushed away from the zinc electrode. Now in this solution you actually have, uh, it's, a, it's a zinc nitrate solution is what you have here. Um, and so as, as the electrode starts to dissolve or starts to erode away, then you're, you're pushing more of the cation. Uh, so as the, as the reaction proceeds on this side, what you get is the, uh, that cation concentration increasing because the zinc metal is, is going to the, the zinc cation there. Um, the, the oxidation part, the electrode where the oxidation is occurring is given the label an anode. Now the, I guess the, the mnemonic, if you will, that I, that I would use here is that, uh, remember that's the, the oxidation process and it's the anode. So you have two vowels there to associate with the, uh, the, the, the physical anode and then chemically what's happening. Goes through the system, can do work, whatever. The electrons are dumped out onto this uh, copper electrode. This is where the, the GER is going to pl take place. Uh, reduction reaction is referred to as a cathode. Uh, so, or where the reduction reaction occurs is referred to as a cathode. Uh, two consonants is the way that I would recommend m m memorizing that one. Chemically, what's happening? Well, what we see is that, well, this is, this is a blue solution, so it's a, it's a solution of copper uh, nitrate, AQ. And then as the reaction proceeds, we, we actually start getting a, we would start getting a coating on this electron, electrode of copper metal. And it's just like we saw in the, the chemical process back here. We saw the, the zinc metal being eroded, and then there's that black coloration that is the copper metal being deposited onto the, uh, the, that particular uh, metal. But uh, here, the copper is being deposited on the copper electrode. And eventually, the, um, uh, you would consume all of the copper. At some point, you know, the, the, uh, either the, the uh, electrode is completely eroded away here or the copper is, is lost here from the solution and, the, and this, this would go to, to zero. It would, it, would, it would drop away uh, eventually. And so uh, what's happening here, let me just uh, indicate it like that. There's a loss of the concentration of the copper here. That's where the salt bridge comes into play. So like I said, you know, I mean, if the reaction proceeded far enough and, and every, every bit of this electrode has been dissolved, then yeah, you would get a, a stop to the reaction. But there's also another way that this reaction uh, can, can stop because notice, remember what we're doing. We're increasing the zinc cation concentration in this solution. We're decreasing the, the uh, copper 2 uh, cation in, in this solution, so essentially, you know, this thing is becoming more negative, the solution that is, and this solution is becoming more positive. There becomes an electrical imbalance between the two sides of the galvanic cell, between the two half reactions. And so, you know, well, as a result, why, why does that matter? Well, if you're pushing electrons this way, 
just think about it in a, 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 a naive coulombic sense, you know, a, a negatively charged particles being pushed into a negative half reaction, into a negatively charged half reaction solution. That doesn't that doesn't work. That would be like a repulsive force, if you will. Okay, so there's a there's an electrical uh, issue within the solution. The salt bridge solves that. And so notice what they're showing here on the salt bridge. You have nitrate and then sodium. Usually that's what we choose. You know, we don't want to have some corrosive chemical here. All we want is some very benign set of spectator ions that will then travel to the particular half reaction so that we cancel out the buildup of charges on either side of the half reaction. And so, you know, as a positive charge gets built up here, that attracts these anions from the salt bridge into the solution. And so you start increasing, I guess we can add that as well. On this side, you start increasing the concentration of the, of the nitrate, and that corresponds to the increase in the positive charge. You try to, these two balance each other out. There's a balance between these two um, oppositely charged ions. Same thing goes on over here. You know, copper is being dropped out of the solution. Well, at the same time, sodium cation is traveling through the salt bridge into the solution here. So the, this is, you know, I guess you could think for every one of these that's consumed, then there's two of these that will be pulled through to keep it electrically neutral. And so as long as you keep that electrical neutrality there in the two solutions, then the electrons will keep flowing. And then, and then what happens is that, yeah, the, the, the point at which the reaction stops, the point at which this goes to zero, is when you finally consume the entire electrode or essentially consume all the copper uh, cation. Um, actually, as the concentrations of those, of the, electro, of the amount of the electrode and the concentration of this uh, changes, you'll see a change in the, in the volts as well. Uh, but that's the basic layout for a galvanic cell. Now again, appreciate the fact that, you know, not only am I talking about reduction and oxidation reactions, but I'm, you know, applying it to a, 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 a more complicated system. So, of course, we get more uh, things going on here. Um, and just like I said before, you know, if you don't have down pat, you know, sort of the idea of what a redox reaction is actually occurring, you know, what's happening here, what's happening here. Remember these terms we talked about? It's, it's hard to even keep track of what we're doing here. So please, I, I urge you, you know, I, I would recommend, uh, if, if you're learning well through this, uh, watch it again uh, so that you can see these uh, terms being used again. The, uh, the last thing I want to say about this galvanic cell in a conceptual sense before we start doing some calculations with it is um, there's, a, there's a shorthand that, that shows up, and I'm going to uh, squeeze it in up here. And um, th this, this shorthand varies depending on, you know, how, um, how detailed I want to be or which book you're looking at. But I'm going to, uh, I guess, give you about the uh, uh, most involved description that you'll see from me anyway. Let me get everything up here so you can see it. And then copper. Okay, the breakdown real quick. So, let's see, the, this, think of the, the double line as the salt bridge, the connection between the, the anode side of the galvanic cell and the cathode side of the galvanic cell, and everything that means in terms of the chemical processes that are occurring. Um, and then, you know, what it's describing is, you know, the, this is the, uh, the metals here are the electrodes, as you can see here in the diagram, and then the the next uh, uh, set of uh, uh, chemical symbols and and, uh, and concentration tells us, you know, about the solution. So what it's saying is that you have a a, a solution at one molar zinc cation, and and really it, it doesn't really matter about the anode you or the not the anode the the anion. Uh, usually, like I did here, you just pick nitrate and be done with it. You know, just pick some kind of uh, inert spectator ion. Uh, if if you need a cation, then pick a, a potassium or sodium. If you need a uh, well, actually I take that back. If you, if you need an anion anyway, it's safe to pick uh, 
a, a nitrate. I'll put it that way. And so this is a, a little shorthand that uh, we can use to, instead of drawing this out every time, we can just use this shorthand to indicate the information that we want to uh, get across. One thing you'll want to be able to do is to take this shorthand and construct one of these pictures because all of this information uh, or all of this information is contained in this abbreviation. Um, now what I want to do right now is, is actually calculate the 1.1 volts that we see here and I'm not going to use this diagram I'm actually going to uh, simplify it just a little bit and just look at you know the well and it's already labeled too which is nice cathode anode. Um, there's our standard reduction potential there. We'll get the calculation here in a second. Uh, just remember that you know the, the cation on the left hand side that would be the uh, oxidizing agent and the uh, the uh, well actually they went ahead and, and switched this so just note that in the the full graph of the um, um, reduction potential. Notice here the zinc metal is a reactant here and uh, the zinc metal is a product here. Okay, So what I was getting at is um, the, the zinc, the one that's lower than the, the metal is the, uh, uh, the reducing agent. You know, that compound which drives the reduction reaction what, that occurs at the cathode. There's a numerical values that they brought in so that they did keep the, the negative sign here for the standard reduction potential for the, the, the uh, reduction of the zinc cation is, is what they're showing there. Um, and again, just like I said before, the one with a greater value is the one where the, the GER is going to take place, where the cathode is now, and then the one with a lower value is going to be the anode. And, and if that's paired up correctly, then, then the spontaneous reaction um, you know, automatically you have this uh, transfer of electrons between uh, these two uh, half reactions spontaneously, as long as you choose the uh, the appropriate uh, half reactions and chemicals to uh, uh, build your uh, galvanic cell with. Um, the calculation. Notice what they're doing here. Um, actually, let me just get the uh, the standard reduction. Potential. So this is this is the voltage of the battery is essentially what we're getting at. Sometimes you see um, actually let me extend that. Sometimes you see E M F electromotive force is what they're getting at. Um, you know how much voltage is there to do work is 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 what this is getting at. And I'm going to repeat the word work a few times because that's what you're what you're talking about. And that's actually going to relate us, get us back into uh, uh, Gibbs free energy uh, in a few, uh, in the, I guess the next uh, presentation. So this notion of what, how much work can this thing do is essentially given by this uh, calculation that we're getting ready to do. The, remember the naught, anytime we see a naught, that's STP, and not just temperature and pressure, but then, you know, one molar concentration for the solution. So you know, the copper plus two and the zinc uh, plus two are at one molar concentrations to be able to get these values. Now here in a few minutes I actually physically, well not physically, but I'll show a diagram about how you actually get these values, so just just bear with me. Um, oh, the, the one molar here, just let me reference this guy, that's why I put one molar in the uh, uh, shorthand for the voltaic cell here because it's standard conditions, uh, standard concentration. And then the, the equation that we use, remember that the, the tables that we have in front of us are always talking about the reduction potential. So we want to describe everything in the context of uh, reduction potential, that value there. And, um, and the, the form this equation takes on is the reduction potential at the, uh, the cathode minus the standard reduction potential at the anode. And, and what that does, uh, it's, it's here, but I'll just go ahead and write it in. You just really pull the numbers from the, the, the chart uh, here and uh, on the, uh, the big chart, if you're doing with some other uh, 
reaction, you get the 1.10 volts that you see on the voltmeters for the, the past couple of, of figures. Um, the way this equation is set up, and this is one you're going to be using a lot, is um, when the, the reduction potential of the anode, you know, you're, you're taking the, essentially the negative of that value. What you're doing is that, well, uh, you know, it, remember you're taking the negative of that value. You're taking the, the negative of that value. That means that you're, you're changing the sides. You're, you're switching the reactants and products places there. Just like with the uh, uh, delta H, enthalpy, heat. Back in chapter 5, back in the previous chapter, you know, if, if, if A going to B is uh, exothermic, and if you flip that, then B going to A is going to be endothermic, and that was the difference of a negative sign and a positive sign. And that's all we're doing here. You know, we describe what is the standard reduction voltage for, or potential for this reaction. Well, it's negative 0.76. It doesn't happen very easily. And then if we switch that, if we want to talk about, well, what is this? This would be the, uh, the, the standard um, um, uh, oxidation potential is what we could have used. And that would be a positive 0.76 volts. And so if, if you flip the chemical reaction, you just change the sign here. That process is embedded, embedded within this formula. We see the, the negative sign here. That's flipping the, the sign there. Um, and the reason why we do that is because now we're talking about, the, in a spontaneous reaction as described, this is where the oxidation is occurring. And so we need to talk about, really, its value in terms of a, an oxidation reaction. This value is listed as its potential for reduction. The, the negative here, which would ultimately you know, lead it to be a, a point, uh, plus 0.76. This is its, its, its potential as an oxidizing uh, reaction. You know, actually, I had, I had planned on talking about how these numbers are generated within this particular presentation. Let me save that for the third presentation. The third presentation, is, 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 I think, will be rather short, and I, I want to concentrate specifically on how these numbers are calculated. I'll just give you a little a preview of that. Um, what's happening there is that uh, you're using something called a standard hydrogen electrode to, to measure. There's that 0.76 for the zinc and we see it, um, you know, 0.76 different sign there. But again, let me, let me save that for a, a third presentation. Um, and, and what I want to do now is, is really just do calculations. I want to I use this kind of setup, what we've talked about up to this point, to do some, some calculations. Because really, that, honestly, that's more important for us. Um, then the conceptual side, I'll just say it. I mean, I, I want you to understand how the standard hydrogen electrode is used to generate a table such as this. Um, if you're going to be an electrochemist, that's really important. But in terms of sort of getting through this material, being able to do a calculation is, is where I want to focus in right now. And looking at these reactions and, and linking it to, to these concepts. So let's let's go through uh, the three exercises I have for, for this presentation and, and see what see what they tell us. Okay. Um, I have two half reactions for a voltaic cell. Um, and let's just okay, so we want to know what the anode and cathode are. Uh, which electron is consumed, and then which electron electrode is positive. Okay, so there's no calculations for this one, so that's good. Uh, what I would recommend doing uh, is to to follow the electrons, figure out the, these terms, uh, the, the focus on those guys, because that's really. I mean, if we look at the voltaic cell that is all scribbled on here, you know, it was the move the movement of the electron that well again determined what was the anode. What was the cathode, reduction, oxidation, all of that. So again, I would link oxidation to, to anode, the, the two vowels, re reduction to cathode, the two consonants, 
And what we see here is that this is the Leo and this is the Gur, and that allows us to establish that, well, thou anode reduction cathode. So the zinc the zinc metal is acting as the uh, the the anode here. And then I guess yeah, what is saying you know which reaction is occurring? Probably probably the anode for this one is probably a piece of palladium, some inert metal some surface on which the reaction can occur, this reaction can occur. That, that's how I sort of pictured this particular voltaic cell. Uh, so so this, this half reaction is occurring at the cathode. Which electron is consumed? Well, we see it here. You know, this is the one where the metal is being lost to the, as the, cat, as the uh, uh, cations are being formed. And so the electron that's, electrode that's being consumed would be the zinc. And then the positive one, you know, it's interesting about these, um, if, if you look at the uh, voltaic cell, um, the, the label of, of negative and positive is actually a little bit of a re reverse of what you might think. The, uh, you know, usually, like, if, if you've done any, if you try to jump start a battery, uh, jump start a car, or dealt with anything electrical on a car, you know, I, when I, you, you watch out for the red, you watch out for the positive side. Well, the positive side is actually where the electrons are being dumped onto. That's why it's hot. <laughs> you don't want to grab something where the electrons are being dumped onto. That's dangerous. Um, and so um, the, 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 the positive side is actually where the electrodes, uh, where the electrons are being dumped into. The, the negative side, the anode, is where the electrons are, are uh, forming from. And so um, how to remember that? Well, I guess you could think of uh, electrons as being dangerous and, you know, don't grab the red, uh, the, the positive value. You see, actually, um, the same kind of layout here. Remember, the electrons originated from the zinc and traveled through the black wire first, and then they're, they're dumped out from, into, from the red wire, and, and that would be the, the hot wire. That would be the, the, if you grab this, you'd feel the tingling sensation there, if it was enough voltage anyway. And so the, the positive one here is associated with the, uh, the cathode. And so it's this second reaction that would be uh, where the, uh, the, the, the positive uh, value would be originating from. It's where the electrons are being dumped right there. Now this next one, we're actually going to calculate. We're going to calculate a standard reduction potential here. Um, Actually, this particular problem makes me think of um, something I'll talk about with the uh, standard hydrogen electrode um, in the next talk. But um, what, the way this is set up, um, so the, the standard EMF, remember I talked about E naught cell as the, the EMF, so that value is 1.46 volts. And uh, we want to calculate the reduction potential for, for this guy, that's the, the question mark, and it's at, telling us that we, ha we can use table 21 for that. And so, well, if we want to uh, calculate the, if we, if we, well, I should say, if we look at our formula, remember that is the uh, reduction potential of the uh, uh, cathode minus that of the uh, anode. Um, remember this is uh, the, Le the Leo down here. This is the one where the numerical value has to be flipped due to the negative sign there. Well, if we look at this, uh, it's, the, it's the Leo that we actually want to figure out. So, so this is actually, uh, this side is uh, the question mark. That's what we want to calculate. So let's solve for that. It's, uh, don't be afraid of the algebra on this one. I'm going to abbreviate anode as just A. And you know, let's see, um, it would be uh, negative value here. C minus naught. So now, you know, we, we have we have this value that's, that's given to us. So that they set up a galvanic cell with these two half reactions, and they just read off the voltmeter what it was telling us. Uh, we'll do uh, somewhat a similar kind of process in uh, the lab as well with the galvanic lab that you'll see. 
Um, so we're given that the reduction potential for the cathode, well, that's the, uh, the cathode, and we can just read that off of the, uh, the, the chart here. Bromine is, is a fairly common one you're going to see. Uh, there we are. It's, it's positive 1.06, and so now we have that value minus the uh, four six volts, both are in volts. And these, that means the, the standard reduction potential for this particular one is negative 0.39 volts. And so what we see is, um, well, actually, the, the standard reduction potential for that that occurs at the, ox at the oxidation half reaction is, is actually uh, lower in value than that of the, the re reduction, the reducing half reaction, which is consistent with what we've, we've talked about. And so if, if you're given this kind of problem where you know, one of the half reactions is not on the chart, then as long as you have the standard EMF, then you can, you'll be able to calculate the uh, standard reduction potential for that particular one. And then the last example that I want to do is we're actually going to calculate the EMF here. Same equation as before. Um, it's just that now we have to be able to look at this particular uh, overall reaction and um, pick out what the two half reactions are. And this isn't always going to be the case, but a lot of times you're going to have a metal in your reaction, in your galvanic cell. And the metal, well, what it's doing is it's telling you, you know, the, the going from a zero oxidation state to plus three, um, it's telling you that this is uh, the, the Leo. And there's three electrons here to balance out the charge there. And that tells you that, oh, well, that means that the whatever is left must be involved in the reduction reaction. And that, that is the case for the, for the iodine. I'm going to save... The, the number of electrons for uh, the, the last step there because I want you to see something. Um, and th that is, you know, balancing redox reactions. There, there's the, 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 the set of rules are, are fairly involved, but, but, but one feature there is that you balance the atoms first and then the, elect and then the charge. And so, for example, here, there's, there's a two in front of the iodide because we have two iodine atoms here, and so that means we need two electrons here to balance out the charge. Negative two over here now overall, negative two on this side overall, and that's our, our reduction reaction. Um, oh, and we saw this issue as well uh, uh, back in that, uh, the first talk about the balancing of the redox reactions, again, whether that's the video or the, the classroom. Um, you know, we would have had to multiply this one by two and this one by three to, to balance out the, the number of electrons that are being transferred. So six electrons lost here, six would be gained here. And when the three is factored in on the other places, that's where you get the three as a molar ratio there and a six as a molar ratio there. Now, when we're, when we're calculating the EMF, actually, tell you the truth, this really doesn't matter. Um, um, the... Um, all that matters is, is what is the standard reduction potential for the half reactions as shown here. And, and when you look these up, so aluminum and, and iodine, let's, let's take a look at the chart. I know this is getting messy. Um, well, there's iodine there. That's the one we'll use. And then aluminum, yes, it's on the chart as well. Uh, this is where the oxidation is occurring with the aluminum, so you actually when this is plugged into the formula, the, the sign will change. And so the, the, uh, the EMF, the standard EMF, which again we give the symbol uh, E naught cell, is, uh, is then simply the, uh, if you plug in the, the values here, you know, this is the standard reduction potential for, for the GER, you know, what happens at the, uh, the anode. It's the same equation that, that I, I've used a couple times now. And then uh, the one for the, the oxidation side, 0.66 volts. And then you do the math, and we see it's 2.19 volts. It's, it's uh, up there with the, actually, actually a double-A 
battery. No, actually, maybe a double A battery is 1.5 volts. Anyway, it's a you know a decent amount of voltage being generated from from this particular reaction. So, so I hope you've gained a, a new appreciation for how complex terminology can get for uh, chemistry. And and honestly, um, after having taught this a, a few semesters now, the um, the uh, I do understand where the the confusion is coming from, but but the the chemistry is is just a flow of electrons. It's just a reduction reaction, a redox reaction that you see in front of you, and and I think all of it's but students a lot of times have uh, trouble with this with this particular chapter. Uh, for some reason, the concepts are are really they get lost in it, and and in large part I think is is the student not understanding the concept. So. I would urge you, I mean, you need to know how to do the calculations like I did here, especially the standard EMF. This, I can guarantee you there'll be something like this on the test. Um, you need to be able to sketch one of these voltaic cells, that's important. But, but the, the foundation to understanding this chapter is to uh, getting a handle on the terms like anode, cathode, GER, LEO, and then uh, this notion up here that I started introducing for this simpler reaction. What's happening to the oxidation numbers are important, again with the terms here, oxidizing and reducing agent. And then finally, you know, we are looking at these half reactions from the perspective of this reduction potential. The reducing reaction has a stronger reduction potential than the oxidizing reaction. It has, the oxidizing half reaction have, has a very weak uh, reduction potential. Uh, oftentimes a negative uh, reduction potential. Um, so getting a handle on these terms I think is, is, is really essential to in being able to enjoy this particular chapter. Otherwise it, it becomes very overwhelming. Okay, thanks.